Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop, and George is off glamping this week. So we got Tim Friedlander. He's going to be our guest host, and our guest wow. tonight is Myrna Velasco. Myrna Velasco, wave hello. Hello. There you go. Fabulous. All right. <laughs> if you've got a question for Myrna or for me or Tim or anything, we'll see. throw it in the chat rooms because we see them here, and we can answer your question. Plus, we have lots of questions for Berna, and I've got questions for Tim, and people might have questions for me. You never know. It's VoiceOver Body Shop coming up right now. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products. Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive. From their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California, here are the guys. Hi there, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm Tim Friedlander. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. Well, hopefully yes. everything's working and everybody yeah. can hear us and, yeah. and life is good out there in internet land which is, I guess is kind of an oxymoron. I guess so. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so Tim, you're guest hosting yes, this week. Yes. You are the owner of Soundbox Group. Soundbox Group, yes. Explain yeah. to us what Soundbox Group is, aside from this thing up in, above your apartment. Exactly. Uh, um, Soundbox Group, at this point, we are um, a group of five voiceover studios, uh, four in Los Angeles area, one in Colorado. And a uh, signatory service. So we provide uh, conversion services for voice talent to convert from non-union to union. Oh. Um, jobs, uh, voiceover jobs. And we're Paymaster. We're also a voice bridging service as well. So we can help bridge in um, you know, multiple talent uh, on different sessions. So soup to nuts, voiceover uh, stuff. We can do everything. We can do everything. Actually, we can do everything from casting to final payroll. And so we've done some projects where we've come in and handle everything literally from casting all the way through production uh mastering uh final delivery and all the way into uh paying the talent oh see so. somebody who's totally qualified to be here <laughs> you know we were like george and i were like well who can we have as a guest host since he went off on his camping mm -hmm. trip i we were like well, how about tim yeah I'm all right down. and here he is here i am and anyway. great but we have another guest tonight as i said two for one uh, our guest tonight is Myrna Garcia Velasco. Uh, she is a screen actor and voice talent. She's known for her roles such as the voice of CJ Hook in The Descendants, Wicked World. She also voices Carla Delgado in Elena of Avalor on Disney Channel and Tora Doza in Star Wars Resistance. She's also played Mimi Mendoza in Sydney to the Max on the Disney Channel. But I learned this tonight. She's Hannah the Hula Girl and all of those commercials for Arco. Hi there. I'm Hannah. There she is. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. Thank you for having me, Dan. Well, great to have you. You're our first in-studio guest. Get the jab. Get the good jab. In, in, you can hang out. In the 2020s. God, it's been so long since we've actually had humans in here. I I've don't... been sitting here alone all this time. Uh, I don't know how to deal with people either. <laughs> can I touch your skin? You can, yeah, just get the hand sanitizer. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. 
Well, welcome to the show. Your life is very interesting. Now you're, you're from like right here in LA. Yeah. Everybody's moved here. Yeah. But you're actually from here. Tell us yeah. a little bit about where you grew up and how you got into voice acting and oh. acting and stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. So I grew up mostly in Pacoima, Van Nuys area. Uh, my grandparents also moved to and from Mexico. They were migrant farm workers. Mm -hmm. So um, every summer, my mom was like, I just can't deal with you. <laughs> Uh, so you're, you're, you're not a very high energy person. Right? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Uh, and uh, no, so uh, we would spend summers in Mexico um, learning Spanish and how to be good children. Um, and uh, yeah, we'd come back for American school and speak English from September to June and do it all over again. And there was also this like weird act break when I was 10, where we lived on a ranch mm -hmm. in... Um, the high desert, which was bananas. What was that like? What, what was so bananas about it? Bananas. Um, so, oh gosh, what wasn't bananas about it? So, like, <laughs> you weren't growing bananas. We were not growing okay. bananas. <laughs> we were growing alfalfa, which is just grass. Right. And so, like, you try to tell, like, these big ranch people, like, we'll grow your grass. And that sounds, yeah. So a lot of cops were coming around, like, what kind mm. of grass? And yeah. I was like 10 years old having to explain, no, sir, it's not marijuana. Right. Um, and then, you know, having to catch the bus for school. And like, the one thing I learned is that goats are very suspicious characters. Uh, and and pigs are sweet and loving, but they smell so bad. So <laughs> Well, they are pigs. They are <laughs> pigs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, it's been kind of a crazy wild ride all around Southern California and ended up spending my formative years in the suburbs and had just had enough of a crazy life to be like, well, the only place I fit in is L.A. I better get down there and just started hanging out, kind of. <laughs> and, and, and that's how you got into acting, just by hanging out in L.A.? In or? L.A., yeah. I mean, it was either that or, or music, and I, I couldn't play anything. So I was like, well... I can pretend real hard, yeah. uh, pretend to have a job, which is what I did for many years before my dad kicked me out of the house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I'm not Thank angry you. about that. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I uh, always wanted to be an actor, um, was jumping on top of goats, singing Oklahoma songs. I'm not sorry about that. They're very mm. suspicious characters, these yeah. goats. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. And I, um, I had the plan, the big, big plan to... Uh, you know, go to university in New York and study stage. And I had graduated high school right during the first financial collapse, not the first, first one in the first 20s, mm -hmm. but the first one in the second aughts. You guys know what I'm talking you about. You mean 2008? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to be cool here. <laughs> um, hey, I tell time by presidential <laughs> administrations. I mean, I've been doing this since the Nixon administration. Ooh. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to date myself. But anyway, no, carry on. No, that was like four years ago, right? Uh, so, yeah. So I couldn't go to college because my sister um, was going to this really prestigious, expensive art school in New York. And I was like, well, I'll follow you, sis. I'm going to Tish. And my parents were like, <laughs> so we we had a ranch where we sold grass, not the lucrative grass, right. but the regular grass. Don't think you can go to New York, kiddo. Um, and me just kind of being a snob and didn't want to go to state school was like, well, I'll just be a server in Los Angeles then. Uh, so I did that and um, somehow also managed to acquire the skills and knowledge through just like studio classes in L.A. and through Stella Adler and uh, all of these weirdo people that just ended up in L.A. to be actors. And I was like, well, you teach me what to do. And <laughs> it seemed to have worked out just enough. <laughs> I, I think that that's one of the things, you know, Tim. And I, and I think what we noticed this is that if you want to be an actor, you, you just don't. It, I mean, you might have some natural talent, but you got to take classes. You have to learn the craft. Yeah. What was the most important thing you picked up from from those particular classes that you took? <laughs> Uh, I, well, I'll tell you what I first thought while I laughed there, okay. um, was a saying in Spanish that the women in my mother's family have carried through generations, which is, um, dile que si y haz lo que tú quieras, which is, yeah, tell them yes and do whatever the fuck you want. 
<laughs> Works for that's me. Uh, I, mean, right. I mean, come on. So that's kind of the best acting advice I can give anybody. Um, because I, I think what was really interesting and and what kind of made me good fodder for voiceover was that um there there's a lot of pressure, at least while I was in the acting studio classes, there's a lot of pressure to be a certain kind of type. Mm -hmm. Um and so for me, I was like, okay, well, it better be this type that does this stuff all the time. And mm -hmm. it just wasn't who I am. Um, and I'm quirky and weird and uncomfortable a lot of times. Uh, so it, it, it just never translated well on camera. <laughs> so a lot of the learning was me unlearning how to, you know, present something that people wanted mm -hmm. and just kind of living in time and right. space <laughs> were, you, were you typecast at all like you know for in latin roles oh, or was i uh mm. maid number one uh, <laughs> prostitute number three <laughs> uh yeah well there was a big push when i first got into the industry i was at, like signed with my first agent kind of thing uh, I was 22 years old, and the most notable Latinas in the industry were Sofia Vergara and Sam Hayek. I'm not built like those ladies, because mm -hmm. you haven't noticed. <laughs> um. I, I, it's not... <laughs> Is that something you pay attention to? Thank you for I, not paying attention to it, gentlemen. That's Thank you right. for not paying attention We're to gentlemen it. in this. <laughs> uh, but that's that was a big thing, um, and still kind of kind of is. I think with a lot more feminist-driven movements and Me Too movements, gentlemen are learning once again to this. The eyes are here, guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there was this big push with my first agent and first manager to try to fit a sexy Latina, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, but. Our fingers sexy, like I don't know. Um, so I just, yeah, I couldn't hit that mark, and and it was really disheartening. Um, so like a good couple of years, and by a couple, I mean more than ten years serving yeah. at Cheesecake Factory uh, <laughs> and maintaining your weight at the same time, which is probably pretty uh, impressive. A lot, of, a lot of night shifts and. <laughs> A lot of sobbing into the cheesecake instead yeah. of eating it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So after after a few few thousand auditions, I was ready to just give up. Yeah. Um, so I signed up for a yoga teacher training class in Bali, Indonesia, and Ooh. was like, "Yeah, I was like, I'm getting out of here. I'm done with this." And um, at that point, that's when I got a call from a brand new voiceover agent that was like, we'd like to represent you. And we think you have some abilities that maybe you're not even aware of. And I was like, <laughs> what's the worst that can happen? You guys will drop me too. Yeah. Oh, it's great when an agent <laughs> calls you because literally the best way to find an agent is for them to find you. Yeah. Not, you know, sending out audition tapes and all that stuff. If you're making money or if you're really making an impression somewhere, they're going to find you. you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I thought my impression was lighting their trash cans on fire. So I'm not sure that, well, that that's something y'all want to try. It could be. It could be an effective strategy, depending <laughs> on what they've got in their garbage can. You I know, suppose. I, uh, the other demos. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah. So, so they just like, try some voiceover. So yeah. how did they get you into voiceover? What did they um, they sold it to me as improv and, um, well, what was really great is I, you know, I did have a, a manager who was like, calling the agents of like, have you heard of Myrna? And they're like, not at all. Well, I'm telling you about her. Um, so they came in and like, I came in and they talked to me and they were like, well, what do you, what do you know about animation? And I was like, well, it's not that I know anything about animation. It's that I really like animation. <laughs> and yeah. yeah. And it just like, it, I had, I told this story and I always tell this story that when I was finishing up my cheesecake factory shift and, I'm crying in the shower to try to wash off all the cheesecake smells. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, before I would go to sleep, I would on my laptop turn on Dragon Ball Z or uh, Cowboy Bebop or, uh, you know, Jimmy Neutron even, and just mm -hmm. like watch a good half hour of heartwarming animated television where it doesn't have to be like this life or death thing that I had somehow partaken in. And it just, made me feel okay to start the next day. Um, and lo and behold, here I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds like you, you, I mean, uh, looking over the stuff that you've done most notably, 
you know, since I, I didn't realize it until I listened to the voice a little bit. And then you told me that you're Hannah, the hula girl in the Arco commercials. And I'm sure you've all seen those. I mean, that's, I mean, that's it, your voice is so unique and it cuts through in those spots. And that's really, you know, it, there's this, it, it's, it's got what it takes. Thank you. You know, Thank I mean you. that you've got that, that something that's like, <laughs> Why does this person stand out? And, <laughs> and these are the things I pay attention to. Well, thank you. I think it's just my obnoxious nature, but thanks. Well, but that's <laughs> but it's it's obnoxious how your pistons work. You know, I mean, come right, on. Now. Right. How did you how did you land that job? I'm sure there um, were lots of people trying to audition for that one. And also, like, if we can put the feelers out in the world, um, just to put credit where credit is due, okay. I am not the first Hannah. Okay. I am the second Hannah. Well, you're the better um, one. Oh, clearly. Sh- no. <laughs> I would like to think that maybe, you know, she was the one that decided to take the teacher job in Bali, you know, right. or, or something. Uh, but I would love to meet her because she is such this foundation of what Hannah's voice is. Mm-hmm. And when I auditioned for that part, I had watched the Hannah commercials from Arco because I was like, that's these are hilarious. This is great. Who right. doesn't want to be a part of that? Right. Um, and I would, you know, in the car while listening to the radio, hi, I'm Hannah, and just kind of mimic it back to her. Hi, I'm Hannah. And uh, so I kind of had that foundation already. So I can't say that, like, oh, I made up the character. I certainly did not. I copied this other girl, and somehow they chose me over her. I hope she's okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure she got over it. Or right. she jumped off the Hollywood sign. Well, there I, you go. Yeah. There yeah. <laughs> you go. Uh, yeah, so I, I got the copy and it was kind of, now that I'm like fully thinking about this, it was kind of this really cool thing back in the before times. I don't know how many times you guys would go to your agents to record auditions, but I went Never. all the time, Yeah, which is the only way they knew my name. So like now in this brave new world, I'm like, I feel so sorry for you guys who have to try to cultivate relationships with agents. I don't know how you do that. Yeah. Mine are my grandparents. <laughs> so not literally but yeah. you know that's that's the relationship i feel i have with them yeah. parents and grandparents anyway uh so yeah i was in there recording one different audition and my amazing uh commercial agent peter just like popped his head out of his uh, Here, office try yeah, this exactly and i was like okay <laughs> um had 30 seconds to read it but i was like oh it's the hula girl i know this okay great just really didn't think about it but kind of mimicked the other hula girl in this sense of like, well, either that's what they want or they want something completely different. And I right. can't deliver that anyway. So thanks for the opportunity, Peter. Have a great afternoon. Did you want coffee? You do? Okay, I'll be right back. Kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, bribing agents 101 is <laughs> my specialty. Is yeah. you do? Bribe agents? Bribe agents. Lots okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Lots and lots yeah. of coffee. Yeah. yeah. So they remember your name. Uh, I put my name on their coffee cups. <laughs> 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 Anyway, huge <laughs> champ. Uh, yeah, and I, I don't know what your guys' like uh, audition turnover rates are because for me it's like two and a half years later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, wow! Welcome to the show. And I'm like, what? Um, but yeah, it was a couple months later. I just got a call, and they were like, "You got it. Go to Santa Monica and record the Hula Girl." And I was like, <laughs> "Told my dad, and he's a big car guy, so mm-hmm. he was like." You know, I think you made it. You've made it to a gas tank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> made it somewhere. Yeah. If you're just joining us, our guest is Myrna Velasco. And we're talking about her career and uh, some of the cool stuff that she does. Tim Friedlander is Hello? our guest host. who's not saying much, but he'll jump in on this. I've heard a lot of this already. Actually, oh, okay. none of it I've heard. Actually, yeah. it's pretty <laughs> funny. <laughs> I'm just stories. listening. I'm just listening to this. <laughs> okay. This is great. If you have a question for Myrna, you can put it in the chat room. And I know Jeff Holman is out there somewhere writing all these things down and transferring to them to us so we can ask her in the next segment of our show. Anything you want to ask her, you know, is she single? Those sorts of things. And and about her career and about voice acting in general. But yeah. uh, uh, So I'm looking forward to hearing what some of you guys come up with. Um, <laughs> so you're doing a lot of animation and I, I mean, question, what's that really like? I mean, that's kind of a general question, but, but what does it involve? I mean, it's auditioning and it's like, and then going in the studio and you don't really get to work with other actors, do you? No, not anymore. Well, I started my animation journey, uh, so spoiled, so spoiled. Mm-hmm. 
you know, Disney was my very first employer. So oh. they were <laughs> fanning me <laughs> while I <laughs> talked into a microphone for the first time. Um, and I also, the first uh, animated TV show I was on was Star Wars Resistance. So mm. it was like the biggest group of oh, terrifying uh, creators on the planet. Um, but so besides me just being terrified the whole time that I'm like, I think they fired me today. Uh, <laughs> it was also just like me just implementing the actory things that I thought I didn't learn in, in all of the studio classes mm -hmm. and kind of really fine tuning and picking what worked for the script and what a luxury a to, you know, be so spoiled with these giant companies, but B, to have the script in front of me was this odd sense of relief that I mm. never I had. Memorize it. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. right, exactly. And I could like write notes down and then like, you know, listen to the vocal director. Like, okay, mm. I see what you mean. Um, so I felt spoiled just in that world alone, but on top of it, we were recording in the round. So I did have other actors and oh, I had other oh. real good actors. Oh, I'm like sure. Tara Strong and Grey Delisle and, you know, like real celebrities like Donald Faison and like, oh my God, these people are, Bobby Moynihan acted with me, with me, yeah. like me. Um, so that was like such an experience because I honestly felt like, well, I, I need to learn from these people and I need to like pay as close attention to everything they're doing and, Inherently, I guess that meant I was finally listening and then I was being a good actor. I don't know. Um, but so it, I was I was very spoiled. Um, and then, you know, cut to a couple years later, the pandemic happens. And I was like, <laughs> I, I record auditions in my closet or at my agents. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean? I have to do all of it at home. <laughs> Oh, and that's it. when you started talking to well, Tim about it. <laughs> so, so what yeah. did you what did you guys do? Well, we, we actually we met through your work. Yeah. So actually, I heard your work before we we met in person because yeah. we worked on your commercial demo with Everett Oliver. Yes. Like yes. We three did. years ago, three four years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, at one of our other studios, we actually sent you to one of our other studios, the West Side Studio, uh, with Paul Mercier and Paula Tiso, uh, and they handled the original recording there. And then we spent like six months editing. Yeah, and and re putting together all this work, so I like I went through like all of your episodes, like tons of episodes, <laughs> to try and find like you know, high quality pieces that represented what you did best. Yeah, um, and then we met yes. in person after yes. that. Yes. So so I knew your characters really well before I met you in person. Yeah, um, which is pretty, which which was actually I hadn't really thought about it. It was kind of interesting to like kind of go that reverse direction that way because most people I meet first and then I kind of hear some of their work. Um, yeah, and now the you know help help you try and get set up in your home studio. A lot of people get set up in their home studios this mm -hmm. last last eighteen months, um, but helped you transition over, which we're currently you're currently in the middle of doing right now. Yeah, as of like last week. Yeah, the new yeah. system, a new booth. Oh my gosh, a new, new life. So, I feel like I have yeah. new skin. What? Is, what uh, how have you got her set up? Uh, how am I well, set up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah. Um, well, first of the biggest thing is you you move locations. I did. Yeah. So so. You know, anytime, and you have, you have to look for, you know, people are you know, walking closet. No. <laughs> shall we tell him? Shall we Not tell Dan quite. the saga? No, okay. I, 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 I yeah. can't wait to hear well, all this. You know, it's one of the things you don't think about. Well, normally, unless you're a voice actor, you don't think right. about what's my place going to sound like. Right. As um, somebody, I saw, I read something on Facebook the other day. They said they found a house they wanted to look at, and they happened to show up at like noon on a weekday, and the church bells were going off, and the, the realtor was like, "Oh yeah, that happens every day. You're gonna love it." Right? And she's like, "Nope." Turned around and <laughs> was like, "I had to give up. I can't remember." So whoever whoever takes credit for that story, I read it on Facebook, and I'm sure. So you remember, I remember that story. Um, but you moved apartments. So, yeah. So during pandemic, I called Oliver. Oliver, wow, Everett, <laughs> Mr. Oliver, Mr. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Oliver. I called Everett because I think I was getting dial tone from you. No, just kidding. Ah, uh, yeah. No, he's like he was like my first contact. Yeah. Like, I don't know who else to call. Uh, and he was like, you know, set yourself up. This is going to be a couple of months. Just going to be a couple of months. <laughs> a couple months. Just a couple three months. months um, yeah, three months max. Yeah. So what you really need anyway is a. Um, like a to-go vocal booth, like a, a booth that you can collapse and then put it back up because you're not going to need it in your apartment in a couple of months. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I went to vocalboothtogo.com, grabbed myself like their last uh, pop-up vocal booth, and I was like, mm -hmm. great, I'll use this. 18 months later, 
poor thing is like falling mm-hmm. apart. I'm like sweating in it all the time. Mm-hmm. Sparks are flying and I was moving. Um, so I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what do I what do? What do we do? <laughs> well, and then you get to a new apartment and maybe you hear the air conditioning through the floor that you didn't hear when you were mm-hmm. looking before. Maybe you went up in an apartment that's all tile floor. Mm-hmm. Right. The I thought it was so place. chic. Right. And yeah. the clogging troop upstairs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So we, we, uh, you ended up getting a booth. Yeah. We ended up, we ended up, we ended up deciding that the booth was going to be the way to go as opposed to try and fix the closet. Right. Um, especially, you know, with, when someone of your caliber is like, I have, I have Nickelodeon wants to do a test next week or this studio wants to do a test. me. somebody's big, you know, that's you, you need to be able to record 24 hours a day, seven days a week when you're on call, when your session comes in. So, you know, the solution at that point becomes either a full build out in the space that you're in if you have the ability to do that or you got to get a booth and, yeah. and get the rental. good space. Yeah. Rental property was not going to let me put yeah. giant holes in the no, walls. No, so no, like, no. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Take out the air conditioning. So yeah. or glue yeah. stuff to the walls or glue stuff to the walls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. or big or mistake. The ubiquitous like, uh, so I have all this foam. How do I get it to stay on my wall? Conversation <laughs> that everybody has. Well, Crazy. Are you staying, are you moving? Yeah. Not living there. What's, what's happening? What can you do? You know, that's sound isolation versus soundproofing, which we know are two and different no, things. So, everybody confuses um, those two. Yeah, yeah, I have soundproof foam. No, you don't have soundproof <laughs> foam. You have some nice sound <laughs> isolation that may help diminish some reflections in your space. But you do not have a soundproof. Um, so, but I did get a. Did I get did, a sound bo- soundproof? You, you booth? got a booth. Yes, <laughs> okay. you ended up with a booth. <laughs> what, what, so, did, custom did. booth or um, a, uh, It was <laughs> so cool, right? Like it was so serendipitous. Um, Tim came over and he's like, "I got bad news for you, and I got more bad news for you." And I was like, "No, this closet won't work." We just hopped onto Craigslist, and just out of like, maybe this will happen. Maybe yeah. I won't have anything. This lady down the street had a vocal booth for sale. It's a Scott's booth. Triple wall. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Say it again. I need to hear it. Triple wall Scott's booth that was not square, rectangular. Oh. It's even better. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Fairly new Mm -hmm. and was willing to deliver it. Yeah. Well, she was down the street. Down the street. Put it on a dolly. Yep. And deliver it and install it. Um, in in the price, so I was basically I was I looked at her for like thirty seconds. I'm like, go buy that. It's like, you sure? I'm like, go go buy sure? that. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't care what you like. Just email her, tell her you're gonna buy it, yeah. and that you'll get it tomorrow, and they'll deliver it. Great. Then that's that's you know, because I've I've done my my I've paid my penance setting up and dismantling and moving booths <laughs> in my time, and I don't need to do anymore. So to have <laughs> somebody who's gonna offer to deliver it and install it, yeah. Yeah. Um, and they were so sweet and just yeah. like super helpful, super quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, yep. yeah. Yeah. And then it just kind of like hung out in my apartment for a little while while I was like, okay, so I've got this laptop and I've got this <laughs> video cam over here. And when I sync them to my phone, and Tim was like, don't do that anymore ever again. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And we just kind of like built it. And yeah. well, the, the Nestor, the great guy who delivered it built it out and had worked with Scott before. So yeah. it was really secure and yep. calling Tim every night. Does it sound okay in here? Does it sound okay now? Sounds great. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then just, it was so easy. It was yeah. so easy to just stick foam. What, what, what <laughs> mic you have her on? Uh, I, you have a Gefell M930. Oh, geez. Which I have not seen. I have two, but I very rarely use them, but they are awesome. I had one. And it works. They're great. Great, great yeah. microphone. Great microphones. Uh, not something you see all the time. No, I've seen yeah. very few people who ever have a Gefell M930. Yeah. Um, but I, they sound sounds great on your voice, and l- I guess it's the you know the what mic should I get? Well, the one you have is working works great for you. Does it sound good? Great, use that mic. Yeah, right. and yeah. it sounds great. Right. Yeah. yeah. All mics sound great. Yeah. The it, the it, the thing is, is there's no microphone that's going to make you a better voice actor. You know, it's only going to pick up everything. So if you're in a good environment, (laughs) it's you're, you're in good shape, but you know, I mean, an average good mic is going to sound fine, no matter who you are, if you're good already, which you clearly are. So you're quite welcome. Well, we're going to take a quick break here. Again, if you've got a question for Myrna, just put it in the chat room. I'm sure we're, let's, let's see if we've got a few questions already. Uh, So get your question in now so we can ask Myrna in the next section. So. We'll be right back with Myrna Velasco and our guest host, Tim Friedlander, right after these messages. Don't go away. Ooh. 
I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beat old body shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. From voiceoveressentials.com, it's the relationship savior, the multicolor LED VO recording sign. Not just a stock on the air or recording sign. It's our exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 color beacon tells everybody at home, which is currently everybody, hey, I'm auditioning, recording, podcasting, narrating, or broadcasting here, and a few moments of relative quiet would be very much appreciated. What's more, the wafer-thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options, from color to brightness, flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up your own personal codes. Red means I'm recording, blue, playing back, green, it's a wrap. Plug in the 7-foot-long cord and hang it on a doorknob or wall hook using the included chain. For voice workers, silence really is golden. And gold is one of the 20 colors you can choose from. Order yours now for just $69.95 from voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. The first thing I want to share with you is the plan for these classes. The the, the five lessons that we're going to do. The first thing is we're going to start with an introduction today, and then we're also going to take a look at what I call the first discipline of voiceover, and that is the art of voiceover, commercials, audiobooks, animation, and so on. There's lots of them. In fact, some that you may not even be aware of. And then in the next lesson, we're going to take a look at the second discipline of voiceover, and that's what I call the commerce of voiceover, how to build your business how to do the things that any business needs to do, but in particular, how to do those things for voiceover. In the third lesson and the fourth lesson, because it's such a big topic, we're actually going to do two parts. We're going to take a look at the science of voiceover. And the science of voiceover is the technology that you need to know. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. And we are back with Myrna Velasco. Hi. Welcome back, and we invite your questions. So put them in the chat room right now. Plenty of time. Um, so, okay, so she's got a new booth. Yep. And, you know, and, and it's, everything's working out for you. It's everything and I wanted. What, what else are you working on right now that you can that I can tell you about. Um, well, Madagascar Little Wild is the cutest animation in the world, in my opinion. Uh, I play a Costa Rican sloth named Lucia. Uh, they were a really great employer during the pandemic. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm also ooh, in Santiago of the Seas reprising a bad guy. I, I did a little bit of like a good guy stint for a little while, but villains are just more fun. Yeah. So I am playing Escarlata la Pirata in Santiago of the Seas, which mm -hmm. is this really fun. Um, I should know this Nick Jr. show um, and uh, Little Wild Madagascar Little Wild is on Amazon. Yes. Little DreamWorks animation there. Uh, those are like my two babies right now, and they've just been these really fun, gorgeous little animations that are for kids, and it's heartwarming, and yeah. everything ends with a happy ending, which was just kind of a great way to end every awful, lonely night. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, it's been a rough pandemic for me, friends. <laughs> As long um, as you're working, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm very grateful that the industry was like, well, let's let's make it work. I'm very grateful for people like Tim and Everett who were just like, yes, I'm busy, and what do you need? So, yeah. Well, they're always going to help the people they know can actually make it. <laughs> really? Because, because, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, it's a lot of people like, why are you doing this? Really? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So are you, you're, I, you must be bilingual. Do you do any, any Spanish work? Too? Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the funny thing um, about Spanish voiceover. It, it's very regional based. Mm -hmm. well, and okay. unless they are looking for bocha mexicanas, mm -hmm. <laughs> meaning mm -hmm. we were born here in the U.S. and have a very, my accent is very L.A., um, it's it's not like hola come estas, <laughs> but uh, that's Jewish Mexican LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it it when you pair my voice, like my normal speaking Spanish voice, next to like my mother's voice, who grew up in Mexico, or another girl who grew up in um, you know Mexico City, my same age, we have totally different accents. And the same mm -hmm. goes for Cubans, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans. We all have regional accents. Wow. And so Spanish market is very picky. Um, you essentially need to have, uh, I want to keep calling it DF. It's Mexico City um, Spanish or Colombian Spanish, because those are the clearest Spanish sounds right. you can get. Uh, and my voice, like, I guess it has nothing to do with the voice. It's just I'm lazy is what it comes down to. And like, yeah, I could spend the time really softening out my accent, but I like it and I'm kind of lazy. Yeah. So I'm not going to change it. So and they're still <laughs> hiring you and the check's still clear. Exactly. So, who cares? so <laughs> so I'm like the worst person. People do ask, like, how do you get into voiceover? I'm the worst person to ask that because I'm like, I literally was just doing whatever I wanted. And some people were like, hey, that's cool. Come over here. And yeah. Yeah. But the majority of people are like, oh, gross. Go over there. Out the door <laughs> forever. So it's just, yeah, if there's anything, it's like just, you do get that one champion and then the rest will kind of fall through for you. That's great. Once yeah. again, we're talking with Myrna Velasco. We got a question for her get a chance to ask it and we we got a couple of questions here so exciting starting with uh phyllis fort you actually get to ask this question it's george's job to ask the oh questions. all right I get to ask the questions okay yeah. Yay. so do you help others with animation demos and or scripts and i will add that maybe to coaching as well is that it might be what is being asked as well i do not uh <laughs> mostly because i some, I'm like thinking about something specific right now. So whenever I zone out, I'm like in a different part of my brain. You, you don't Apologies. have time. In other words. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I don't have time. Um, and I, I don't consider myself an acting coach or teacher in any way. Um, just because what I feel I do is just really intuitive on my own. And I, I've hodgepodge so many different things together that aren't even acting. Like I do holotropic breath work before an audition. <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah we'll talk okay. about that okay. um so i i kind of don't do that because i don't want to freak people out mostly and um i'm not sure where to begin with like well <laughs> do it this way um so no I, I don't do coaching but i can you know recommend everett oliver's amazing so's tim he's a fantastic vocal director in the booth um and also just like taking improv classes you will probably never improv a script in voiceover, probably never. But it is incredibly helpful to have this wheelhouse of like three characters you can always go to. You know, can I do my petulant child? Can I do my um, brassy Mexican woman? And can I do my New Yorker or Mid-Atlantic? You know, just have three or four characters not just accents but specific characters that have mm -hmm. names that have identities and homes that way you get the vocal director to laugh at the very <laughs> least and remember you right, <laughs> like, exactly so so yeah if there's any wisdom i can impart it's it's to get free and do some improv and have some people in your mind yeah. you <laughs> build the character not the voice 
Exactly. It's the character, not the voice. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever thought about doing any directing or had the chance to? No. Then don't do it. I won't. <laughs> I won't. I want to get really, really good at this. I just want to get really good at this stuff. You know? <laughs> Excellent. Okay. J. Horace Black asks something about Paymaster. We won't go there. Yeah, uh, we can come back to that. Yeah. Uh, it says, uh, I am sag aftra So what's the process once a client reaches out to me directly for work? I've had a few friends who is an exec in a large corporation that wants to have me read VO for one of their in-house training videos. Do you just work with the talent in the states that you're located in, or do you cover every state? Do I need to find their budget? Or fr- Jay Horace, Ooh, there, that's a uh, lot of questions. Is, you okay. ask a lot of questions. There is a lot of there is a lot of stuff there. Um, okay, so. You want to email him? <laughs> yeah. uh, I will try to distill this as much as I can. So, signatory paymaster services. One thing to think about when you're SAG after is that there is not in voiceover. There's not just union or non-union. There's also no non-jurisdictional, which are projects that don't fall under a union contract. And a lot of times you get jobs that can be converted. For example, anything that's non-broadcast is very easy to convert. I Meaning you could take this job that was non-union. If it meets the SAG after a minimum scale, including your pension health contributions, as well as payroll taxes, you can then convert this job to a union job through a third party signatory and paymaster, which is what we do. So we will handle all of the contracts. We'll make sure all the paperwork gets submitted. We'll handle submitting pension health as well as payroll taxes and get the talent paid as well. And there are a, a lot, a lot, a lot of jobs that can be converted corporate educational anything industrial non-broadcast training videos they can be converted so if you are a union member and you would like to work on these jobs you absolutely can you can convert them and make this job pay into your pension and health we work globally so because sag after is global rule number one sag after contracts apply all over the world and we have worked with talent in london we've worked with talent in south africa in the united states any state in the United States, we can help talent with. Um, best thing to do is to reach us at sbsignatory.com, fill out an information sheet, and we can tell you if it meets the scale, minimum scale needed to convert the job, then it is convertible. If it doesn't meet that rate, then you can't convert it. Makes sense. Hopefully that helps. Yeah. <laughs> or, you know. So execs, you know, if you have an exec with a company who's doing training videos or anything that's not going to ever be seen outside of the company, those fall under this co-ed industrial contract and can very easily be converted for approximately $650 to $750, depending on, on the job. So if you're getting about that, um, obviously these are very rough numbers. Don't quote me on any of those, but um, we have to look at the exact contract, the scale, add up all the costs for pension health, payroll taxes, signatory fees. And whether you're a loan out or an employee will determine how much you pay in taxes, whether you do pay taxes, employee taxes. Um, It is. And that is the tip of the iceberg (laughs) of this. That is, that is the simple version of this, Um, but it's convertible. You know, I've, I've said this a few times we've converted in the last year, well into the mid six figures of jobs for voice talent and have helped dozens of voice actors meet their pension and health so they can get their health insurance. Um, And with, you know, approximately 150 to 200 jobs that we've done the last, in the last year, Uh Um, it is there. It is an option. It is not just union or non-union. There is a lot in this middle that is convertible and can be converted to union and still allow you to work as a union SAG after voice actor on jobs that on the surface appear to be, non-union see now i figured he'd give a good long answer for this so Myrna could take a deep <laughs> long breath <laughs> settle down just a little bit <laughs> always running on high so. yeah, yeah that's okay uh you get hungry boys question here. all right i'm gonna read this too. verbatim just to okay. make sure that i don't mess this up here. okay yeah because Myrna has a light upper tenor voice did she get typecast for fat quick rapid speech characters or did she get to voice some little old Nana's too? <laughs> Who is this person? It's hungry boy. <laughs> hungry boy. Hungry boy. Uh, I don't. I 
I did. I was a Nana in uh, We Bear Bears. I was a little grandma. I play a lot of kids. A lot, a lot of kids. Um, I, I don't know. I, I can also drop lower, a little bit lower, snack boy. Uh, <laughs> I, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't have a mind for vocabulary. So I'm like tenor. Am I a tenor? I don't know. Uh, so I'm just kind of thinking about that. But I, again, it's, it's all about character for me. So I can play with whatever the good Lord has given me, um, I'll try to find, yeah, something uh, that that is interesting to listen to. So I do listen back to my takes, um, even if I'm having someone as fabulous as you, my dear friend, Tim, uh, kind of putting it all together for me and making it sound nice. I do want to know what what sounds funny, what sounds interesting, what has peaks and valleys. So to me, that's more important than just like what types of characters can I play? I think I can play everything. That's sort of something that feels, <laughs> I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll feel it as well. And, and you can feel that read. I mean, some things you not know, sound right, but feel right. Exactly. And there's a yeah. lot of, of opportunity to put in those things, especially in, in, char- in creating characters that maybe aren't supposed to be sound a certain way exactly. or or have a certain personality that something feels right and feels right in that moment that's where like and that's probably where this improv stuff comes in yeah. where you can find these emotions and, and find these different parts of this character that feel right in the scene in the moment well another thing as well is um i spent a lot of time um through Stella Adler, Leslie Kahn, uh, Lee Strasberg, a lot of time working on script analysis Script so, is huge. It's huge. Yeah. And, and I, it's huge in commercial too. I think a lot yes, of people yes. like kind of gloss over that there is a, a lot of times it's part of a sentence or a couple of words that is like, oh, that's the reason this spot was written. Right. That's the joke that they have, or oh, okay, I get I see the perspective of what this writer was or what they're trying to get. Exactly. And, and, yeah. And commercial and commercial like script analysis and commercial is huge huge, huge. And, and especially in, in character work too mm-hmm. a lot of times you'll have that the one word or the one little one little aside in in a spec that is really the key to that character yeah yeah and, and, and to find that is is it's so important what, what's your process when you when you get a script ah uh, what's your process what's the process <laughs> Uh, I get a script and then I scream because I'm like, no, to do work. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, I love doing this. Um, I, I read it. I read it. Uh, oh, no. What's your process? Uh, Sir Anthony Hopkins once said uh, to read the script and then read it again and then read it again and then read it again. Um, so that's that's all I'm doing. I'm reading the script. I'm reading it out loud. I'm reading it into a recording with no voice just to, or like no affectation to the voice, just to hear what the words are. I'm writing on the script. Okay. Well, there's three mys. So which my is the most important and how do I build the mys and how do I, you know, break the, the building so that it's funny or so that it adds something different or what's a reversal. What's the antithetical here? So all of the script analysis BS stuff. Um, Hey, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm really excited that i could say that <laughs> um yeah yes yeah, so there's just a lot of script analysis for at this point it's like I, I read it and i read it and i read it and i'm like okay what is this also is this you know a commercial that's 15 yeah. seconds and so maybe i don't have time to well what about my happy play you know or you know <laughs> like, okay so how do i shrink it down or is it a 45 minute animated almost feature and how, you know, is there drama in this? Isn't an adult comedy or um, yeah. Also who, who know your who, what, where, when, why is um, for the scripts. Like who is producing this? Who is the voice director? Who is the animator? Cause that's also going to give you clues as to how realistic, how broad, how silly, how, grounded you have to be for these parts um so yeah i get like super obsessive i literally have like my mom has texted me being like are you camping she even (laughs) called me in like four days are you okay and i'm like yeah i'm just really into this character right now and she's like all right bye uh (laughs) call me when you're normal again 
Uh, so that's why I don't call mom. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's a lot of that processing and then getting it on onto tape. See, I know the old yeah, words. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Drop yeah, a needle on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> week, week. <laughs> uh, yeah, so then I just record it and uh, the first, <laughs> that's not true. Sometimes you found some really good first takes, but I always tell myself like the first take is trash, delete it. Uh, but it probably might I think not the be. the first take is gold a lot of the time. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I do too. Well, yeah. there, there is a, depending on, on, I guess, depending on where you are, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of discovery that can happen in that original take that can get glossed over in in subsequent sure, takes. Sure, sure, um, yeah. But I mean, yeah, for like <laughs> as you build this character, you'll find more depth to it. But I think there's a lot of like honesty in that first take. Really? Um, that, that can happen that 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 you can miss out on if you wholesale throw it away as oh, true. that's my first take. True, true. Um, Good point. And, and, a lot of my first takes are me being like. So today was the Arnafaslatical. That's not a word, but let's try again. So <laughs> that's why I had to throw them away. <laughs> do, do you do a lot of, um, so when you've been over, I, you're off to the side, so actually, I don't actually see you in the booth. Right. Um, do you have a lot of physical, do you bring like st any like stage or theater yeah. body work into your characters? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, which is really exciting now that I'm finally recording in the booth because I'm like, I oh, can yeah, move space. my yeah, yeah, yeah. arm. Yeah, it was a big help. <laughs> what? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of physical physicality. Physicality. Oh, physicality. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's a lot of that. Um, and for me personally, because I'm insane, uh, it's a lot of grounding. So I think voiceover, if it did anything for me, uh, other than make sure I'm always eating food and living, uh, is <laughs> it gave me the sense of grounding because I had to stand still and mm. be in front of the microphone. It's like, I'm saying we go around. It's not going to catch all of the words. So stand still, Myrna. Um, which is was always such a big problem on camera where I'm like, it's just like, going to move around as much as possible. Uh, so... Yeah, voiceover just gave me this really beautiful sense of like just grounding in and learning how to stand still. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, once I figured that out, I was like, oh, I can add some weird stuff of like, okay, I'm just gonna like tense this body part and then all of a sudden I'm getting shot in the stomach or something. Um, another thing that I did, I can't tell you what it was for um, because it's still out in the ether, but so I had a retainer and braces and uh, there's a character where like she had braces and I was like, well, I don't have braces. And it's really hard to kind of keep the stuff in your mouth. Right. So I just put my retainer on <laughs> and <laughs> like, <Doink>. yeah, <laughs> and like booked it. So, <laughs> so like little things like don't be afraid to like just play with, okay, well, if I had a prop on stage, mm -hmm. Wouldn't I? Why won't I just use a prop? And well, and that character lives in the whole body too, which I think people forget in, in in voiceover is it doesn't live from the neck up. Exactly. And even on stage, like um, yeah, I use I, my dad's a drama teacher, and I still use one of the earliest things I learned from him was to watch people on stage and watch their feet, yes. and see if they're acting all the way to their feet. Yes. And you see a lot of people who act from the waist up, mm -hmm. or from the knees up, or from the neck up, and somebody who's fully grounded in that character. I think this goes in for voiceover as well, is you can take this character and ground this character all the way to your feet. Um, I think uh, it was Aaron Fitzgerald. Um, I, I, she coached it at my studio one night. She talked about getting into the skin of that character mm. and all the way down to the toes and all the way down into that entire body of that character, how beneficial that can be. Yeah. And how much that, then that adds into that. Then that becomes where the sound of your of the character comes from right because how you're standing versus the character still going to live in the honesty of the moment of the acting that they're in but then the sound comes from how am i standing do i is my you know i have a sprained ankle i have you know i, have, I hurt my back or i have a bad knee all this, this these are all just normal things that happen to me on a daily basis <laughs> yeah i was but, gonna say yeah. i'm like <laughs> this, is, this is how i feel anyway exactly I mean... but all of those things will will Coming build into <laughs> how things come exactly. out of this character. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's just acting. It just, uh, the, the thing that like was my big epiphany was just knowing who your audience is and for voiceover, mm -hmm. your audience is your microphone. And for camera, your audience is a camera. For stage, your audience is the giant room of people staring at you. So yeah, yeah, it's all acting. It's just 
how do you tailor it to the audience? Mm -hmm. You still need those tools. Yeah. We got time for one more question here. It's a great question from Grace Newton. She says, Myrna, what are your long-term goals in voiceover? And do you have a dream job? Um, to do all the characters. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I I really felt that like when I stepped into voiceover it was the first time I was just kind of living moment to moment and living in the present. Um, so I don't actually have huge long term goals at all because I'm like I don't know I might get hit by a car tomorrow. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> but also just I'm I'm so happy to finally be able to be doing what I love to do, which is to just create characters and hang out with people who love telling stories. Um, so I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to keep doing this until I get good at it. And someone either tells me, go do this other job or uh, then I die. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you have a positive attitude. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you for inviting yes. her. This nice. Awesome. Uh, meeting all these wonderful people in this job and uh but you've been a delightful and I, I really appreciate you coming on and you know and so they can see you is hannah the the hula girl and and all these other things that you've been doing and yeah. now when i hear your vo that voice i'm gonna that's who that well mern all righty well, thanks for being with us today. thank you so much for having all right we're gonna take another quick break and then tim and i will wrap things up and Ooh. rack it up for tech talk right after this yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. And we're back to talk about one of our fabulous sponsors that have been with us so since the early days back in eWebs, and that is Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect. Yes. Now, as a studio owner, yes. I'm going to assume that you use Source Connect all, All the, time. the time I was on it had hours, three hours of source connect session the day, three uh, hours, three hours on the day. Yep. yep. Uh, connected to New York and we had, uh, we were connected to the cutting room in New York with one talent in Los Angeles and three in New York in the studio over there. Yeah. And it's great record. Okay. It sounds like they're in the same room with us. Yeah. So you really, if you're, if you're a full-time working voice actor, you really need to have that capability. Now when the mm -hmm. pandemic hit the, the, the like, you have to have Source Connect. Absolutely. We've been telling people that for years that you have to have Source Connect, yeah. but now you absolutely have to have Source Connect. And what it is, is a studio to studio link where you mm -hmm. can talk to the, they can hear you, you can hear them. And it's just like, it's like being there. It's like being in there and we can record on our end. So we would record the talent um, on our end. They can record the talent on their end. And uh, as a studio, we're done. I don't have to send them files. They don't send me files. It's great. Yeah. So if you want to have Source Connect, it's real easy. Just go over to sourceelements.com and look at all the different options they have for, you know, they, they've got budget plans and yep. you can, I mean, you can buy it monthly now, I understand. Yep, monthly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So go on over there, check out Source Connect and Source Elements and tell them we sent you. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. And we're back. So we got, we got to wrap things up here. So you have to go through what we talk about here. Like for instance, oh, okay. Great. next week on this show, which we're about to record is tech talk number 62. Wow. I All can't right. believe we've done that many. Uh, 
Then we're going to take a week off for Labor Day and Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. Yeah. And we return on September 13th with vocal therapist Amy Chapman. So, which, and go. she's fabulous. And you'll you know we'll learn about you know how to get your voice working the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And then on September 27th, VO Legal Eagle Rob Siglam Paglia. Rob's I'm awesome. the only person yep. who actually can pronounce his name. <laughs> uh, but he's, he, you know, we're going to be talking about AI and some of the issues yeah. that we're dealing with yep. now and, and how to legally, you know, be a voice actor and his book, mm -hmm. Voice Over Legal. So that will yeah. be a lot of fun. Uh, we have to thank our donors of the week. We can alternate on these. All right. So I, I'll start with George Whittem Sr., which is George's dad. Gotcha. Brian Page. Rob Rader. Addie Gibbons. Uh, Antland Productions. Uncle Roy. Hey, Michelle Blanker. Uh, Christopher Epperson. Sandra Manwiller. Philip Sapir. Trey Mosley. Trey, how you Trey, doing? Hi, hey. Trey. Shelly <laughs> Avellino and Thomas, Thomas Pinto. Tom Pinto. Pinto. Tom Pinto. Tom Pinto. We also need to thank our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and JMC Demos. Our uh, thanks to Jeff Holman in the chat room tonight and our technical director, Sue Merlino, getting it done tonight because that's what she does. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Uh, and Tim for being our co-host this oh, week. Thank you for having me. All right. We're, we're going to re-rack it and get set for Tech Talk, so don't go away unless you're watching this in replay, in which case you're going to go, I missed it. Anyway, uh, you know something? This is not an easy business. You got to really work at it. You got to learn. As Myrna was telling us, you got to take classes and you got to watch voiceover body shop because listen, if it sounds good, it is good. Oh, you got it. Excellent. Wow. I'm Dan awesome. Leonard, Tim Friedlander, and this is voiceover body shop or VO BS. Have a great week, everybody. <laughs>